They're not comic book heroes, but each of these predators has abilities that defy the imagination. Faster than a speeding bullet, armed with X-ray vision, they're hypnotic, they're transformers, and they can smell their prey from two miles away. They're the world's deadliest animals, and they've got superpowers. The world's top predators are experts on the hunt. But some take life into the realm of the fantastic. More than hunters, they are dazzlers. More than stalkers, they are miracle workers. They have super speed, super sight, sixth senses. And like the grizzly bear, a super sense of smell. The grizzly bear is widely known as one of the most massive and ferocious predators in the natural world. It may also have one of the most powerful senses of smell on Earth. The scent detecting area of a grizzly's nose is 100 times larger than a human's. and it bristles with over a billion receptor cells connected to over 10 million nerve cells, sending scent-powered shock waves to the brain. It is believed that these bears can smell other bears, trash, or even a rotting animal's carcass in the lean days of winter from more than a mile away. It's that super-powered nose that keeps the grizzly bear alive when a good meal is just a bit harder to come by. elk are an occasional meal. With young ones, just after birth, odors can be particularly strong. It's just a matter of time before the young elk slips up. The chase yields an important meal for this grizzly bear family, something that can be even harder to come by in the leanest days of the grizzly bear life cycle, thanks to one of the strongest noses on the planet. But even the strongest nose on Earth can't smell certain things that this snake can smell because the snake's super smell uses two different high-powered organs together. This snake has nostrils on top of its head. 
plus an extra feature called the Jacobson's organ. This organ is a sensor, and it allows snakes to detect chemicals in its surroundings that could lead it to prey. Enhanced smell for the hunt. When this snake, and this snake, and this snake snap their tongues, they're collecting chemical information about their environment that can't be detected through an ordinary nose. Pheromones, for example, are chemicals that allow animals to send signals to one another. A bee will release pheromones to attract other bees. This mouse's pheromones will influence the behavior of other mice. And with the help of the Jacobson's organ, this python can sense their pheromones. First, the snake's tongue flips in the air. When it retracts its tongue, the snake inserts the forked tip inside its head into the Jacobson's organ, which allows the snake to detect the mouse pheromones, providing extra information to use to track its prey. Nose, tongue, and Jacobson's organ work together. And in an instant, the hunter prevails. Thanks to a tongue that can smell. But perhaps the most impressive nose in the animal kingdom is also the most fantastic because of what surrounds it. The owner lives below ground in a world of perpetual darkness, surrounded by the crawling creatures on which it preys. Down here, eyes and ears are meaningless, and touch is everything. This is the realm of the star-nosed mole. It gets its name from the 22 appendages, or feelers, that surround its nose. Each feeler is covered with thousands of sensory receptors called Imer's organs that make the star one of the most ultra-sensitive organs of any in the animal kingdom. It's so sensitive it can detect minute particles like a grain of salt buried in a pile of sand. The mole lives on worms, insects, and small fish. The outer tentacles probe for a potential meal. Then the inner sensors determine if the prey is edible. The mole is practically blind. To better see, it presses its feelers to the ground, which transmits a three-dimensional picture of the terrain back to its brain, like a mental sonogram. And when it presses down its feelers, it does it at warp speed. One of its favorite meals, earthworms.
For the star-nosed mole, the worm's telltale segments and hooks are a dead giveaway. But to find it, the mole has to touch it. Its amazing ultra-sensitive feelers have rewarded it with yet another meal to be enjoyed in the darkness of its creepy, super-powered world. Back in the daylight, super-powered vision helps the crafty kestrel scan for prey. In an instant, it strikes with precision. The Kestrel is a finely tuned killer, successful enough that their territory has spread nearly across the globe. The most spectacular weapon in its arsenal are super-powered eyes, capable of seeing far beyond the range of human beings, capable of seeing in ultraviolet light. Its prey, the vole, spends much of its time underground or beneath dense vegetation. But when the vole moves, it marks territory and pathways with urine. The markings are invisible even to the vole. But they are visible in ultraviolet light and they tell the kestrel exactly where to look for its prey. Keen extrasensory vision keeps the kestrel fed, thanks to sight in the ultraviolet spectrum. Three hundred and sixty degree vision makes life dangerous for a bee. Whenever a jumping spider's around, this acrobatic creature ignores the web when it gets hungry. The jumping spider is a hunter with eight extra powerful eyes. On quiet legs, the spider maneuvers into position. And then it puts its amazing eyes to work. Four eyes on the back of its head scan for movement to its rear while in front, four more eyes track the prey. The largest eyes themselves don't move, but inside the eye, the retinas can scan back and forth. With great distance vision for a creature this size, the jumping spider stalks its prey. While the bee feeds, the spider climbs into place. Eight eyes and eight legs, ready to pounce. The spider continues carefully into position. It connects a silk tether to its perch. Unaware, the bee laps up nectar. The spider sizes up its jump, calibrating an exact landing before attack.
a perfect hit. The usefulness of wraparound vision doesn't stop till the bee is dead. Because while it struggles, the spider still keeps an eye on that stinger. And finally, success. One less bee in the garden. In the ocean, sharks are among the most streamlined and efficient hunters on Earth. And they've honed all their senses into lethal weapons. Sight, smell, taste, touch, and sound. But a shark not only sees and hears its prey, it can feel it. First, many sharks have a sensory organ that runs the length of the shark's body and fans out on its head and jaw. Called the lateral line, it's full of nerves that pick up subtle vibrations and pressure changes in the water. It is so finely tuned that when combined with its other senses, a shark can detect prey from over a mile away. Next, pores in the shark's head, called ampullae of Lorenzini, are groups of sensory cells that can detect weak electrical charges, such as the heartbeats or muscle movements of creatures hidden in sand. Each ampulla is filled with a jelly-like substance that reacts to changes in pressure, temperature, or electrical conductivity. These pores are so sensitive that if two flashlight batteries were placed a thousand miles apart and a single wire were strung between them, a shark could detect the charge. When hunting for a meal, sharks may call upon all of their senses. The distant sound of splashing might alert them to possible prey or perhaps the scent of blood draws them in. Closer in, their excellent eyesight may come into play. Vision and ampullae of Lorenzini, along with smell and hearing, all function in unison to plot a deadly path. crushing artery splitting bite satisfies the shark's sense of taste. Scorpions have a sixth sense too which comes in handy for hunting at night. If their venomous tails don't get you, their legs will.
Each footstep sounds like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Organs on the scorpion's legs sense the shock waves. And if there is an insect moving within three feet of it, the scorpion will detect its movements. For its next trick, a scorpion can do something else few animals can do. Glow in ultraviolet light. That's because of fluorescent chemicals in its body. Why? Nobody knows. But one theory is to attract insects that see in UV light, like a moth to a flame. This moth is lured toward the glow. Sensitive hairs on the scorpion's claws detect the flap of the moth's wings. As the moth gets closer, vibrations intensify. Hypersensitive body parts give this scorpion a powerful ground game. But underwater, this ungainly creature has a sixth sense that is hard to beat. Australia's platypus has the tail of a beaver, webbed feet, and a bill like a duck. But this is no ordinary bill. It is a supersensory organ laden with thousands of cells responsive to the electric fields generated by all living things. So to hunt, the platypus closes its eyes, its ears, and its nose, and lets its bill do the work. Called electrolocation, it is thought the waving back and forth motion we see here helps the platypus to locate exactly where electric pulses are coming from. The pulses are like neon signs advertising fast food. And when one looks promising, the platypus digs away. All thanks to its sixth sense. But even six senses are no match for the bizarre powers of mind control. Beneath these breakers, in warm tropical seas, this fascinating creature lives and hunts, endowed with powers of hypnosis. To protect itself from predators, a cuttlefish can disguise itself at will. But when it's looking for a meal, 
it does something even more amazing. Controlled by the animal's nervous system, these moving bands of color captivate a wary crab. Special cells in the skin expand and contract to produce a mesmerizing light show that lulls its prey into a deadly trance. When it's close enough, it snatches its prey with two long feeding tentacles. And hypnosis pays off. Hypnosis doesn't just exist underwater. Some land animals have developed their own techniques. These stoats can be found dashing around the English countryside, chasing down one of their favorite foods, rabbits. But when just chasing doesn't get the job done, the creature turns to an unexpected superpower. The stoat, on the hunt, will go nuts. This manic behavior gets the rabbit's attention. Who could ignore a stoat on steroids? Spinning, jumping, and twisting, the stoat inches closer and closer. But the rabbit remains transfixed until it's too late. As effective as the hypnosis of the stoat and the cuttlefish may be, there are creatures like these parasites whose hypnosis crosses the line into something even more bizarre. Mind control. Beneath this peaceful landscape, a snail has eaten parasites. They've turned it into a zombie. These spectacular, bizarre, bulging eyeballs are the snail's tentacles. Inside them, parasitic worms have begun an amazing feat of mind control. These parasites have taken over the snail's tentacles and its brain. It's all part of an ingenious plan to extend the life of the parasite and its offspring. The snail has become possessed. It is doomed now to follow the parasite's will. And the parasite is on the move looking for another host. Next, the parasite needs a bird. Hypnotized, the snails march into the sunshine. They climb from the shade to the tips of exposed branches above. <laughs> The 
snail's tentacles, engorged now by their possessors, have grown to resemble a maggot. And a maggot is the favorite food of the birds above. In an instant, the bird attacks and the parasite triumphs. The parasitic worm happily multiplies in the bird's stomach. Its final trick is to complete the cycle, but it will have little trouble as the snails below graze on bird droppings. Filled with a new batch of mind-controlling parasites, once they're eaten, the hypnosis of the snails will continue and the life cycle of the parasite will roll on. Many animals will run from their predators, but just because an animal can run doesn't mean it can hide from a predator with super hearing. The great gray owl lives in the Arctic, where even in summer, its meal can be buried under inches of snow. To hunt, it locates its favorite prey, mice and other small rodents, by listening for movement far below. The feathers surrounding each eye function like a dish antenna, directing sound to the ears. Each ear receives sound at a slightly different volume and angle, which allows the owl to pinpoint where the sound comes from. It focuses on unsuspecting prey as much as two feet beneath the snow and sets off on the attack. They continue to listen throughout the approach. finish the job, owls have become masters of the dive bomb. Super hearing will ensure this owl a full stomach tonight. Tomorrow, the listening will continue for the owl and for another winged predator far away, lurking in the darkness and also gifted with super-powered hearing. For the vampire bat, super-powered ears are also its eyes and they work in astonishing ways. At dusk, when the day ends for many creatures, the vampire bat's day begins. They leave their roost in search of food. To navigate, they rely on a special trick of hearing called echolocation. To understand what's around them, bats produce a high-pitched noise. The noise registers beyond the range of human hearing, but it travels outward from the bat's mouth, hits the objects around it, and bounces back. These sounds then tell the bat what's around it. Fast enough to let it fly through jungles without hitting trees and fast enough to find prey, like the peccary. 
This bat sizes up its prey and decides to wait for the 40-pound beast to go to sleep. Once the peccaries turn in, the bat cozies up to a likely spot where the feast can begin. Along with super-powered ears, these vampires have heat sensors in their noses. This guides them to where warm blood flows just beneath the victim's skin. With her scalpel-sharp teeth, she makes an incision to draw blood. They only get a taste before the peccary wakes up. For bats, smaller prey is usually more manageable. Fishing bats also use echolocation to direct them. The sense of sound can guide them so well that they can hear fish surfacing in a pond. They use that sound plus echolocation to time their dive to the exact moment a fish rises close enough to the surface. In an impressive display of timing and winged agility, the bat skims the water, picking off fish with its long legs and claws. Using echolocation and otherworldly hearing, a bat like this one can catch and consume up to 30 fish in a single night. While some predators rely on extraordinary skills to overcome their prey, others rely on extraordinary strength. The natural world is filled with super muscle-bound beasts, and strength can clearly be a superpower. But pound for pound, the power brokers in the animal world are not the big beasts but the small ones. This rhinoceros beetle can lift 100 times its body weight, the equivalent of a man walking a mile with a car on his head. Strength which comes in handy when it thrashes horns with rival beetles. But the Muhammad Ali of the animal kingdom is this little guy. A mantis shrimp might not be a heavyweight, but ounce for ounce, it can throw some of the fastest and most powerful punches in nature. The mantis shrimp spots its prey with hexnocular vision. Two eyes that have three focal points each, and so many light-sensitive cells they can see in the ultraviolet and infrared. With dinner in its crosshairs, the mantis prepares to strike. Running for cover under a discarded glass is useless. The club of a mantis shrimp can easily break quarter-inch glass. And the shell of a crab. The mantis stores energy in its arm. It works like a spring-loaded mechanism. When the energy is released, the mantis smashes its prey with the force of a 22 caliber bullet. Now that is a super-powered punch.
The cheetah is the world record holder for sprinting speed on land. Gazelles are fast too, but not fast enough. The chase lasts less than a minute. Any longer, and the cheetah's own body temperature could kill her. Super speed underwater looks rather different. The sailfish advances. They've been clocked at leaping out of the water at speeds of up to 68 miles an hour. Like cheetahs, their super speed is limited to quick bursts of velocity. giving the sailfish a plausible claim to the title of fastest predator in the ocean. But despite the sailfish and the cheetah, each endowed with super speed on land and in the water, the fastest animal on the planet rules the air. The true superpowered king of speed is about to clobber one of these pigeons. A peregrine falcon may chase a pigeon in one of two ways. The first method is the flat-out chase. Sometimes it works, but pigeons are fast too. And when jostling back and forth with a peregrine in this mode, prey will occasionally slip away. When this happens, the peregrine can recalibrate and switch to method number two. It's called the rapid stoop, the dive bomb. The attack begins slowly, then gradually picks up speed. Its wings tucked in, the falcon is approaching 200 miles per hour. It is now the fastest animal on the planet. Against this super-powered speed, the pigeon is defenseless. It's tough to hide from an attack like that. But even the fastest animal on Earth can't match a speed-driven superpower in the jungles of Costa Rica. Speed is everything for the basilisk lizard. When you prey on winged insects, you need to be quick because your prey moves fast, really fast. So when the basilisk is in a hurry, it displays one of the most spectacular capabilities in nature, a true superpower. This flat-footed reptile is so fast and so light that it can run across the surface of the water at speeds as much as five feet per second.
that speed alone doesn't make this superpower possible. Long toes on their rear feet, along with fringes of skin that unfurl to meet the water, create little air pockets under the lizard's feet, and the air pockets give the lizard lift. A true superpower in nature. In the struggle to survive, a few lucky creatures have extra special gifts to be the strongest, the fastest, the cleverest, to get inside the mind of their prey, to feel them or to see them in ways that others can't. These are the blessings that keep a creature or a family or a species alive. Those lucky few with the rare advantage of superpowers.